whenever you travel to a system, it's always a good idea to sane the area and see what uh, local aquatic insects are in. So I've got a portable screen here. It's going to put it in the water, and then Vic's going to kick some rocks up above, and whatever he disturbs will be swept downstream into the net. We can have a look at it and choose some flies to match the most predominant food sources we see. Lots of things here, Vic, to imitate. Big, too. Yeah, there's some interesting things here. Got a couple of uh, caddis larvae here, some uh, hydropsyche caddis. Uh, they're net spinning caddis. A uh, little uh, golden stone fly here that's just uh, shed its uh, uh, skin here. It's that's in the neat. You don't yeah. see that very often. And here we've got a large uh, golden stone fly nymph right wow, here. He's a big boy. He is. Okay, I'm just following Vic's advice here. And just by how I bring the fly line back to me, I'm controlling the drag. I'm concentrating on that chartreuse indicator and making it drift drag free as though my nymph was unattached to anything and was drifting like a natural uh, mayfly nymph in this case down into the run right down the fish's throat. Anytime that indicator pauses, pulls under, I raise the rod. It could be a rock, it could be a trout. Fish on, not sure what. Could be a white fish. We've got both white fish and rainbows in the system. No, I think we have a rainbow this time. So good news. What we came here for. So once again, oh yeah, this is a nice little rainbow. Rainbow. Let me the net up there for you. Yeah, yeah, if you wouldn't mind doing the honors, Vic. Your river, your fish. There we go. That's a nice. That's a gorgeous rainbow. About a 16-inch rainbow, it looks like, eh? Yeah, that's a gorgeous fish. Gorgeous fish, and there we can. I'll just hold the fish in the net, and we can see. There's that little flashback pheasant tail, right, right in the snout. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. So again, we're just using that indicator system. I'm down to about uh, 5x tippet fluorocarbon, about two and a half feet below the indicator, and just a little tungsten bead. About a size uh, 14 scud hook, so it's about a size 16 overall, maybe a little bigger. But that tungsten really helps it get down and tick along the bottom where the trout are. Many times we just don't work our nymphs deep enough, so we'll just take that out of the way. We'll admire this rainbow. And that's why you have to come to the crow's nest. Just a spectacular fishery. Gorgeous part of the world, easily accessible, beautiful part of Alberta. You've got to come and Come see Vic at the Crow's Nest Angler and he'll take you out and introduce you to these rainbows himself. I'll just sort of head him upstream. Oh, there he goes. Oh, back home again. Back home. Thank you. You bet. Well done. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Joe. That's a lot of fun. Zimbauer. For videos like the one you just saw and more, subscribe to our channel. You don't want to miss our weekly uploads of educational videos, exciting trips, and much more.